example. When a piece of music sticks to picture, it's the fucking best feeling in the world. That's kind of the process always. It's just like, when it's right, it's right. You know when you know. Uh, there's a certain warm, fuzzy feeling that you get when you finally acquired that song. It's like when I grew up playing hockey and baseball, whenever I would score a goal or, you know, get a home run, you just got filled with this like adrenaline and excitement. For me, that same feeling happens when like you just find that right piece of music. Like it's the same feeling as seeing like a massive circle pit at a show or like, like a hall full of people singing along. The composing version of that is when everything lines up and I think, you know, Andrew spins around in his chair and we, we both look at each other and we go. Uh, I just got so lucky working with Andrew, Gordon McPherson and Ray McNeil because they just gave us that those moments like so many times. Jason sent me this video that he had made on his phone. That was his idea of what the series was gonna be. And it was the reenactments that you see in the series. He had roughed that out with his action figures. Uh, and then instead of, instead of the interview subjects, it was himself that he had filmed on his phone. And Jason had always said that he would, like one of his like main goals in life was to become a wrestling historian. And so when I saw that video and I saw like what his vision was for it and I knew his passion for the subject, I was just like, yeah, sign me up. When we're hanging out, we're just like always talking about the things that we're discovering and the things we're into and the music and the movies and the TV shows and just like everything that's like inspiring us. And so we're always in tune with each other and we're just, we got inside each other's heads a little bit. Before the pilot even got greenlit, I was writing some music just based on the idea that he told me. Uh, and then the pilot got greenlit and he asked us if we wanted to give it a shot. For me, whenever I start off with a project, music is usually gonna be the, the first thing I really like lean into to really start getting my like creative juices flowing. There were some obvious ideas, you know, we wanted to have some hard as nails, kind of heady synth stuff some shreddy guitars, but after some conversations with Jason about the, the tone of the show, we're thinking about having some, you know, modern classical piano in it. Just something that would give the documentary style a much more serious tone. We wanted the music in the show to really have this almost like a trance-like quality. Like the idea of having our subjects like speak directly into camera and telling you the story and having the music just kind of like sweeping you up into it and almost having this effect that hopefully just like draws you in. The process of writing the music for the pilot was really the process of us trying to figure out how we were gonna do the series. And we knew we needed to get a way in. This was my granddad's uh, Gibson J45 acoustic guitar. Wade played it on the pilot. The pilot episode was the the killing of Bruiser Rody. There's this incredible moment where where Tony starts singing this kind of almost spiritual, and and we need to write something specific to that. But maybe we could write an original accompaniment to his singing. If heaven ain't a lot like Dixie, I don't want her to go. My voice got choked up, and everything got choked up. I just told him, I said, you're gonna be all right, brother. I said, I said, I'm, I'm gonna stay with you, man. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm with you elements of that moment are introduced when you meet Frank Goodish and you meet his family. And elements of it play after he gets stabbed. When that started to line up, I think we figured out how we were going to approach a lot of uh, a lot of the heartbreak that this show deals with. 
So the process of writing the music for The Killing of Bruiser Brody was pretty intensive. It's a 44 minute episode with 43 minutes of original music in it. Four, three, two, one. Doing music for an episode of television is like making a collection for a fashion designer or something. You need to pick your palette, you need to pick your motifs so that all of the pieces can feel like they're part of one thing. You know, when it got greenlit, it was, you know, figuring out what the inspiration was uh, that could be used throughout the rest of the series. Uh, the Macho Man episode, you know, so much of the music for that isn't this aggressive 80s stuff, it's this magical sounding, like, love story music. What sounds like a fairy tale? Like, what sounds like two people falling in love? And uh, so it, it lent itself to like a lot of chimes and bells. This is Korg MS-20 Mini. Makes a lot of bass growls, droney sounds, some of the arps. A lot of the bass sounds, bass synth sounds, I should say, uh, are this synth or trying to sound like this synth. Roland Alpha Juno is probably my favorite synth that I own. Use this extensively on season one. It sounds good always, it always fits in the mix. Uh, harmonica, uh, sleigh bells, various kalimbas. Here's some bongos. Those are in Benoit a little bit. This is a melodica. It's got used in Dino Bravo a little bit. <laughs> Soundcraft Ghost Console, which is the most luxurious thing that I own. Everything you hear in Dark Side of the Ring goes through this board. Here's some of the pedal board that we have going, but this is constantly changing and in flux. And they did such an amazing job of just kind of like creating music that um, was world building to the characters. Um, like the music just w would bring a lot of images to your mind and it would just, it would be a quick moment to set the tone for that character. I think importantly too, kind of assigning a specific instrument to each episode, um, whether that be like accordion or if it's going to be a very acoustic driven thing. And, and uh, that really helped us narrow in on, you know, what instrument uh, speaks to what wrestler and their personality. We need to make room for all of those emotional and dramatic pivots. And the music would come back and it would just be perfect, even more. It would just go places that I even, I couldn't even dream of. So we have these incredibly nuanced, incredibly difficult emotional places that we have to go to just to do the story justice. But it's been super rewarding. There's not really a second goes by without, without like a tone of music in the show. And that's really because we always felt like that the music for Dark Side of the Ring is like a huge part of the soul of the show and that it was going to help us really draw the audience into the stories. Without music, uh, you know, I feel that trying to promote an emotional connection uh, between viewer and a production is just, is, is, it's impossible. There's uh, certain tones and, and certain elements that gets the left side of your brain going where, uh, you know, without sound, it, you, you couldn't get to that point. Um, uh, very much so, definitely the, the most impactful music that I have uh, that I've ever worked on, on on the show. Just telling these stories that, you know, some people know, some people have no idea about, but that's a really incredible moment like in the studio. It's a, that's a moment when you're like, I should be playing music. I need to be doing this with my life. Dark Side of the Ring, it's the largest body of work I've done under any banner, under for any project. 159 
pieces of music for 16 episodes. It was such an experience of creating something new. And I love the show. 